So my DL7 day camping finally arrived and I was very happy to get it. Some of you have said you've been able to pick this up for as low as like $27, $28, which is astounding. For $170 more, you can buy the Leatherman Charge TTI. Huge, huge difference. But there is a difference in quality as well, and we will get to that. Now, one of the things I want to look at first is plier heads. Now, this is something that I did not realize. And when Max Level EDC was reviewing some of these, he pointed this out. And I went ahead, took a look, and sure enough, he was right. So one of the first style of plier heads that we've come become used to in the Leatherman Wave clone style is something like this. Now, I think this might have been what the Ozark Trail Multiforce had, something similar to this. This is a now discontinued switch. Swiss Tech uh, Leatherman Wave copy, but you know, something similar where you don't have any replaceable wire cutters, you've just got a pretty good set of pliers, and we were happy with that for a little while. And then there were newer and better plier heads that came out, like the Swiss Tech and the Shell Multi Tool. And what happened is we got these replaceable cutters, which were fantastic, and these were even better. But notice that things have changed yet again, and whether we wanted it or not, they have updated this new version to have a different plier head. So this now will mirror the Leatherman arc style. So take a look at this. Here's the Leatherman arc, the free series plier head. And right here, we have very, very similar. Wow, pretty amazing. Now, taking Leatherman's own words, if this is the toughest set of pliers out there, is this charge copy a better set of pliers than the Leatherman charge TTI? All right, that's a whole nother can of worms. Probably better not dive into that. But it is, you know, just interesting food for thought. Probably rile some people up. So let me know what you think in the comments below. But I think that is neat that they have, it's neat to see that they have done that. Whether they should have or not, I'll leave that up to you, the expert. So what we do have is these replaceable wire cutters. And of course, we've got to do some hard wire test with this. So I've already cut, uh, use these wire cutters several times. So go ahead, uh, let's see here at the bottom, do that again. So I think I, okay, here we go. So it seems like it's pretty good right there. No issues when I close it. Barely any gaps at the bottom, maybe a tiny little gap, but not much. And so let's go ahead and use the other one right here and let's see there we go snap that and we'll snap that pieces of wire flying everywhere and then we'll go ahead look there seems to be everything still intact Look there, seems like everything's still fine. And then you will notice that with these wire cutters, one will be straight down and one will have a notch in the bottom. And I think that's to make them stronger. At least that's what the engineers feel like it does. All right, so that's the plier head. Now let's go ahead and talk about titanium. So with both of these, I can't tell any difference between the SQT and the Day of Camping DL7, except the price point. So the one is about $20 more expensive. But other than that, to me, they look identical. But there is definitely a difference between the Leatherman Charge TTI and these. So when you look at both of these right here, you can definitely tell that the scale is different. On the Leatherman Charge TTI, uh, we definitely have some more, well, it's just more well thought out. It's more interesting. The design is more intricate. We've got a lot more going on right there. And that design looks really nice. And with this, it's more just modern. It's sort of flat and not as interesting. It looks nice, but, you know, it's not as there's not as much much texture. And with this right here, this day camping will probably wear off. And with this, it's like inscribed into the metal. So again, you can tell there is a lot of difference right there. And then when we look at the bottom, well, one of the things I get asked a lot is, can you use the pocket clip from a Leatherman Wave? No, you cannot, because the ends of these are totally different than the 
Leatherman charge or wave or surge. So unfortunately or fortunately, you cannot use those implements. So again, this is where we do see some of the price point the difference. Now, also on the blade steel, I do want to point this out. This will be a huge difference. So with my Leatherman Charge TTI, I believe it's the S30V right here. Um, it actually says it, yeah, right there, S30V. And then with this day of camping, it will be 7CR13, uh, I believe it is. So 7CR17, actually. And I will assume that both of these are the exact same as these specifications because the day camping actually did not come with any information. If you look on their website, they don't post any information about metal or anything like that. So we'll just assume they're both the same for the moment. All right, so a huge difference in the knife. And then we've got the cutting hooks as well. So we will see that also on this side. Look fairly similar to the charge right there. Uh, with this cutting hook looks pretty nice serrated blade like that as well and again we see the same thing on the outside from the sqt we've got the knife scissors saw and serrated blade so one of the big things too to keep in mind is that the leatherman charge tti still has this full-size diamond file and then the other file as well and with the sqt and the dl7 they will have a very small file on the inside but you will both have a saw in both of these as well uh, so right Right there, we see these. And then again, instead of this file on the outside, what we will see on these two tools is actually a pair of scissors. Now, I've already used my pair of scissors on the SQT a couple times, and I do feel like they're already starting to maybe show, show up a little bit of dullness, so they may need touched up fairly often but they do seem to be actually cutting better. Maybe I just wasn't cutting with the right angle. Who knows? But keep that in mind. Who knows? It may be an issue, but they seem to be cutting okay right now. So let's go ahead and snap this DL7 into place. And it's one of the things you have to make sure that the spring snaps all the way in place. So you have to keep pushing it back. And then these cut very, very well. Just slice right through the paracord. So essentially what you're getting is a Leatherman Surge pair of scissors almost on a wave length style or charge style a platform. So what we've got is almost like a free series plier, a surge set of scissors. And so again, they're essentially picking and choosing what they want or what they feel like would make a perfect tool. And it's ending out pretty amazing. Now, what we get on this tool right here is we'll again get this wire stripper at the bottom, can opener, bottle cap lifter. Right here, we have our diamond file, our file and our diamond file on the other side. And then we do have our large screwdriver. And then we have this micro driver Phillips on one side, very small straight edge on the other. And then we do have the all. And then we have this amazing uh, bit driver, quarter inch driver, and also a nut driver, which is very, very important to me. I really like having that. So then we've got the same thing on the SQT. Again, it seems absolutely identical. No real issue, no real changes or differences at all. So I always get asked that, are these, which tool should you pick? And essentially a lot of these are the same tool whether it's the DL30, the Swiss Tech, all those right there, pretty much the same thing as well. All right, on the TTI from Leatherman, what we'll get is, again, this micro driver. We'll get this large screwdriver. And then we do get a pair of scissors. Then we will get this wire stripper here at the bottom, and that V-notch and Ken opener, bottle cap lifter, and then, of course, the smaller Leatherman bit kit or bit driver and then one of the big things to keep in mind is you do not get the nut driver with a leatherman that's one of the big things that i miss with leatherman tools really wish they'd go over to the quarter inch system all right so with the leatherman charge pair of scissors we're gonna 
we're going to have to make a couple cuts. It will cut through it, but it's just not the same. So there we go. Not too bad, but sometimes you'll have to sort of chaw through. Depends how you hold the scissors. But again, not an awful performance, but again, nowhere near the scissors of these other tools. So with the DL7, one of the things you do get with this is you do get a bit kit, and that's the same with the SQT. You get a three bit kit right here, double-sided. So you've got a uh, smaller Phillips, you've got a smaller flat edge, and then you do get some hex bits or Torx bits, and then you get these large bits as well. And then also what comes with it are these pouches, again, SQT, day camping don't really see any difference even in the pouches as well again fairly cheap nothing that much to talk about so let's talk about weight so we've talked about price and we've talked about function so let's talk about the weight of some of these tools and one of the things you need to keep in mind is that the leatherman charge is definitely the lighter of the two uh, or of the three so it comes in at 8.89 ounces, where these will be 270 grams or 9.6 ounces. Leatherman Charge TTI comes in at 252 grams. So again, that will be a lot different as well. So that will be something else to consider. It is definitely lighter. Now, when it comes down to the final question, which should you pick? That is something only you <laughs> can answer. Leatherman definitely has a warranty on their side. They've got their name on their side. They've got the reputation on their side. They've got knife material on their side, quality, all that. But the huge thing they do not have on their side is the price. So for a hundred and let's say generously $150 more, it's actually more for the DL7, but $150 more is it worth it? Well, that's up to you. I think for a lot of people, yes, it will definitely be worth it. But for some people just jumping into the multi-tool field, definitely not. Probably the DL7 will be plenty for them. It will be a great tool to start them out. And actually, I wish I'd had one of these a couple years ago when I started this channel and I started working on HVAC. That would have been an amazing tool. But these weren't even available back then. In just a couple years, there, there has been a huge leap in affordable tools. This is probably one of the best times to jump into multi-tool collecting ever. And for those of you just joining the multi-tool phenomena, it's really a great time. I'll see you in the next one.